Hello everyone. I'm delighted to be virtually with you today presenting a plenary session at the ATC 2020 and would like to thank all the ATC committee for giving us this opportunity. I have nothing to disclose. Let's start with the case scenario. This is a 59-year-old Caucasian male with history of left kidney donation to his cousin 13 years ago, now CKD4, presenting for kidney transplant evaluation. At time of donation, he had mild hypertension on one blood pressure medication, and his BMI was 33 kg per meter squared. How was this patient counseled prior to donation? A little background. Currently, there are more than 100,000 candidates on the solid organ transplant waitlist, with the number growing every year. We remain in this inevitable dilemma of trying to protect our living donors on one hand, but saving the lives of renal failure subjects, getting them off of dialysis on the other hand, and this is a difficult compromise. Reviewing some of the recent literature related to adverse effects of hypertension and obesity in living kidney donors, this is a retrospective analysis compared 1,295 living kidney donors with a weighted cohort of 8,233 healthy non-donors with a six-year follow-up. Authors concluded that kidney donation was associated with 19% higher risk of hypertension. In addition, donors who developed hypertension had a plateau in the usual post-donation increase of GFR. And this study included about 3,000 living kidney donors from 1989 till 2016 without pre-donation hypertension. Authors concluded that post-donation antihypertensive medications use was correlated with lower GFR and obesity post-donation. Another study included more than 24,000 older kidney donors more than 50 years of age in the United States from 1999 till 2016. Authors showed that when pre-donation antihypertensive therapy was available, there was six-fold increase of end-stage renal disease compared to those not on blood pressure medications. After accounting baseline characteristics, the 15-year risk of end-stage renal disease was higher in older hypertensive donors with a hazard ratio of 3. However, the absolute risk was small. Regarding obesity, this study analyzed the risk of end-stage renal disease associated with obesity at time of donation among more than 100,000 living kidney donors in the United States with a maximum follow-up of 20 years. Authors showed that for each increase in BMI more than 27 kg per meter square, there was an associated 7% increase in ESRD risk with a hazard ratio 1.07 p-value 0.004. Talking about the current evidence we have, according to Kidigo 2017, the decision to approve donor candidates with BMI more than 30 kg per meter square should be individualized based on demographic and health profile in relation to the transplant program's acceptable risk threshold. According to the NDT 2015, we suggest well-controlled primary hypertension as assessed by ambulatory blood pressure, less than 130 over 85 mm mercury under treatment with maximum two antihypertensive drugs, diuretics included, is not considered a contraindication for living kidney donations, and that's 2C. Based on the aforementioned studies, we aim to explore the effect of relative reversible contraindications particularly hypertension and obesity on GFR compensation or plateauing in living kidney donors. Furthermore, focusing on additive effect of hypertension to obesity on all donors and in donors less than 50 years. We retrospectively reviewed UNO star file data from 2000 till 2014 with follow-up up to five years. Our inclusion criteria included age, sex, ethnicity, hypertension, medication at time of donation, BMI, smoking, donor type, and EGFR. Our exclusion criteria included organ donation other than the kidneys and patients whose pre-donation hypertension, BMI status, or EGFR at follow-up were missing or unknown. We used multivariate logistic regression for statistical analysis. Our outcome was failure of compensation or EGFR by creatinine clearance less than 45 ml per minute at latest follow-up. We looked at the whole cohort of 129,689 donors and divided them into three groups, non-hypertensive non-obese, hypertensive non-obese, and hypertensive obese. Also, we looked at donors less than 50 years of age, which were 84,937, and looked at factors associated with poor outcome and factors associated with poor outcome in obese. As you can see in this model, there was no statistical significance on the outcome of EGFR compensation in non-obese, non-hypertensive donors. In hypertensive non-obese donors, the odds ratio was 2, with a p-value approaching significance. Adding hypertension to obese slightly with a higher odds ratio and a p-value of 0.01.
area under the curve for this model was 0.82. Looking at the donor's cohort of less than 50 years of age with a total number of 919 hypertensive subjects, strikingly, hypertension was associated with 24 times increase in risk of failure of EGFR compensation or arrest at 45 or less with a p-value of 0.02. In this model, other factors were non-significant. Area under the curve for this model was 0.87. Furthermore, analyzing the cohort of obese young donors, hypertension increased their risk of GFR arrest at 45 or failure to compensate by 10 times with a p-value of 0.03. When we excluded, however, the GFR at time of donation, the odds ratio was only 2.83. Other factors that were significant in this model were the age of the donor, odds ratio of 1.15, female gender with the odds ratio of 2.89. Area under the curve for this model was 0.74. In the model of the effect of blood pressure medications in young hypertensive donors, there was no statistical significance between those who were on diuretics versus those who were on diuretics and other medications. Limitations of our study includes its retrospective nature, missing data, short follow-up period of 2 to 5 years, and loss of follow-up. Future directions should focus on young living donors' long-term outcomes, UNOS data to include systemic longer follow-up times, scoring system to assess cumulative risk of relative contraindication which may lead to absolute contraindication, firm guidelines for multiple relative contraindications, evolving literature should be reflected on the way of living donor counseling. These preliminary results suggest that both hypertension and obesity have adverse additive effects on GFR compensation or are culprit to plateauing of GFR over a period of five years. Hypertension per se is a valid risk factor for failure of GFR compensation in young, less than 50 years kidney donors. Presence of multiple relative contraindications in living donors should be carefully assessed, monitored, possibly controlled or reversed, and prompt counseling is very important. Thank you and I welcome any questions.